Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's another day, another bright, sunshiny day. And we will, if we can get hooked up here with Zoom. I don't know, it wants to act ugly. We're going to get there. Everything can go wrong, do go wrong sometimes, and that's just like Satan, but we have to tell him to get back. We're going to have church this morning, <clears throat> and he's not, he's not invited. <clears throat> and we will be studying from... Uh, Another look at uh, the book of Romans. But let's just start. I'm going to forego the song this morning. Uh, and we'll start with our devotional scripture reading. And I'll be coming from Psalms 19 and verses uh, 1 through 14, reading out of the King James Version. And it reads as follows The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle before the sun which is a bridegroom coming, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the ends of the heavens and his circuit unto the end of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making, a wise, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is cleansed, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warm, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back that servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Dear kind, gracious Heavenly Father, it's once again that we assemble ourselves out to the house of worship we come before you to say, Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. 
Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us a mind to go out to the house of prayer. You didn't have to wake us up, but you did anyway because of your love. And Father, each day is a new day and a new opportunity to tell a dying world about a risen Savior. And I thank you for giving us that opportunity. Then Father, I ask that you touch the hearts of all of us with that opportunity to make good on the opportunity and to boldly witness Christ telling the dying world that the gift of salvation is free to all who believe. Then Father, I ask you to just look upon the sick and shut in everywhere. Touch my body as I go. It's facing some challenges this morning. But through it all, your grace is sufficient and your mercy suits every case. And I thank you. And Father, I am praying this prayer in the authoritative name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. As I said, another lesson, powerful lesson, is talking about salvation. And the theme is faith. And again, the lesson subject is salvation to all who believe. And our subtopic is a gift for everyone. And our lesson is coming out of the 10th chapter of Romans and verses 5 through 17. And I will be using the King James Version <clears throat> to me because that is the Cadillac of the, of the biblical translation. <clears throat> And I will read one verse or two verses of our scripture uh, that I was taken from. And all of you to have your Bibles, if you don't have a Sunday school book or your tablets or your smartphone, just Google Romans 10, 5 to uh, 17, and you'll know where I, I'm coming from. Because if I forget to I start talking and forget to uh, come back to the scripture, you'll know you can follow me. And verse four is not in our printed text. Well, it didn't start there, but it reads as follows. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. That's, that says a mouthful. It really talks about, <clears throat> it answers our subject text. Who is salvation for? If you believe salvation is for you. <clears throat> because he, it's, he, Jesus came to save everyone. It's not about who I am, what my status is, my nationality, or my economic status. All I have to do, and all we all have to do is just simply believe. And let me read verses uh, five and six while I'm at it. It said, for Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doth these things shall live by these things. That's the law. And verse 6 says this, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise: Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. And then verse Eight says, and it's seven says, now who's going to go down into the deep and then to bring uh, Christ up out of the dead? So uh, I'm going to stop there and it said, now, and it's, in this lesson, we have another of Paul's teachings on faith and how non believers become believers in Christ. And that is, and that the law of the Jews were trying to keep the law, which had no salvation, whereas all righteousness comes through our faith in Jesus Christ. So we can't work our way to heaven, and we cannot keep the law that God, uh, Christ knew that, uh, that we come. And Jesus didn't come to do away with it. He came to fulfill the law. And let me go back to our scripture says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. And all we have to do and to have salvation 
is to believe on Jesus Christ. Now, as, as I had in my notes here, it says in verse four, he said, it tells us plainly, Jesus came to end the law for righteousness, to it, but everyone have to believe. And this is what Paul is telling his audience. He was speaking to the Roman Christians, a Jewish Christian. He said, you cannot work your way to heaven. Salvation is the all to salvation. Only thing you have to do is to believe because the Jewish people were trying to keep the law. They were so hung up on this legalism that they missed the whole point of what is required to have salvation. And it's just as simple as the nose on your face. Just simply believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as your personal savior. That's it. And God in his divine wisdom fixed it so man would have nothing to brag about. Well, I did this and I'm saying, you know, what you did was is that you just simply believe in Jesus Christ. You accepted him as your personal savior. That's as simple as that. And you might hear me reference that time and time again because I'm trying to get a point across. We cannot work. The law cannot say it was the law was a schoolmaster and it pointed to us needed a savior, needing a savior, because in itself there was no salvation. And you might ask, you, well, what about those Old Testament men who was going on? They believed, they had faith, and it was counted to them as righteousness. Because in each one of these lessons for the last few weeks or months is we've been talking about faith from one perspective or the other. And so we see the day, we, the lesson is that, okay, uh, if you want to have salvation, you got to believe. Simple as that. And it's for everybody, not just the Jews, but the Jews and Gentiles alike. Okay? Now, and it's pursuing or continuing down the road of talking about uh, the believers in the Old Testament, they believed God. And, and, and we know, we discussed last week, faith is our belief with our total being. Faith is our belief. So we see those Old Testament prophets and patriarchs who believe are the Old Testament saints who was gone on before Christ went to the cross, they believed God. And whatever he told them, they believed that. Okay? They, they believed it. And they obeyed God. And that, that, that's how their faith was counted to them in righteousness. And we like to talk about Abraham and how he believed God because and his faith was counted to him as righteousness. Well, well, yes, it was. It was just a true fact. When God, let me just point some things out here. When God told Abraham, or when he called him and told him to listen, Abraham, I want you to get your family and your lead from out of this country. And I want you to just go to a land. And when you get there, I will show it to you. He that is obedient and faith, all in the one, because he be. He took God at his word and said, when you get where you're going, I will show you the land and I will make you a father of many nations. He believed God in his obedience. He didn't hold a conversation with God about, I don't know where I'm going. Why should I go somewhere? I don't know where I'm going. Scripture didn't tell us that he had that conversation. He just simply packed up his family and left. And he goes, he believed that when he got to where God wanted him to be, God will say, this is it, Abraham, settle down. And that's exactly what Abraham done. Okay. Let me give, so you, show you another faith uh, and obedience. And one of the talks about in Hebrews 11, and that is Noah. When God told him, Noah, I want you to build me a, a bill or not, because it's going to rain. He, Noah didn't hold a conversation with God. He just simply 
followed God's instruction. God told him how to build the ark. I said, now build it. Moses got real busy. He wasn't worried about his conversation, his reputation, excuse me, and nor was he worried about what people was going to say and how foolish he may have looked uh, and building an ark and it had rained in 120 years. So God didn't have to worry about that. He said, he God told him, build me an ark because it's going to rain. Here's how I want you to do it. He was there was obedient and he had faith and belief in God. If God told him it was going to rain, then it was going to rain. That's all we need to know. It was going to rain. If God said it, that settles it. So we have to have faith and we believe God. Yeah, that's how those Old Testament prophets and some of those and biblical characters in uh, that, yeah. And see, Paul, uh, they, they believed God and they obeyed God. Okay. Then uh, 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 verse five tells us about Moses. And this is what Paul is, is trying to get his point across to his audience. He said, yeah, Moses described the righteousness of the law. If all who could keep the law and they were to live by the law. But there was, and I'll say again, there was no salvation in the law because Jesus ended the law and righteousness and replaced it with a believing faith. And all who is going to be saved is going to believe and have that faith. And we, and then the results of believing in, in faith, we will, we are assured of eternal life. That is living in eternity within the presence of God. So that brings me to this, my aim, what I want to get across today. I have, my aim is to answer the following questions. What is salvation? And who is for? Who or what are we who or what are we to believe? Who gave the gift that we talked about in our, our subtopic and in our lesson? Who gave the gift? What the, what is what was the gift for? And why was the gift given? Okay. And my second aim, after we answer those questions, is to look deeper into Paul's persuasion that salvation comes through. One, belief in Jesus Christ, not works. Let me say this again. Salvation comes through one's belief in Jesus Christ and not his or her works. Okay? Uh, Paul makes a distinction between the law of most that man could not keep in the first place as it was written by Moses, and the righteousness law of grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. The, all, the law only showed mankind that he needed a savior. And I, I like to refer to it as a plumb line to show how far we are, the measure of our, our standing with God, and that we is not saved, then we are out of balance with God, the Father. So we need to get brought into balance. And how we we'll get that is through our faith in Jesus Christ, who made a one-time sin atoning, reconciling all who believe back to God, the Father. And he took his shed blood to do it. So. Yes, the salvation and believing in Jesus Christ. So let me just kind of move on to our questions. And the first one all, what is salvation and who is for? Salvation is our redemption from sin and unrighteousness. And all who believe in salvation, it is our escape route from the bondage of sin. 
that, that was a mouthful, but let's say it again. Salvation is our redemption from sin and unrighteousness. And all who believe it is our escape route from the bondage of sin. See, we're in bondage of sin because sin entered the world through ease and had a, a disobedience to God. Because all into that, we were in perfect harmony with God. Okay? Salvation is our deliverance from unrighteousness to righteousness. That is through our faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is our deliverance from unrighteousness to righteousness. That is through our faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation can also be looked at as the believer's rescue package from being alienated from God the Father to becoming a member of God's holy nation of people. Then the next thing, salvation is not just for the Jewish nation, but to everyone that believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as his or her personal savior. This incorporates John 3.16 because it says, God so loved the world. He didn't just say the Jews. He didn't just say the Gentiles. He said the world. That whosoever believeth on his son, Jesus Christ, shall be saved and have everlasting life. So we can say that is our rescue package. Is in Jesus Christ, God's only son. And he rescued us from the bondage of sin through his shed blood on the pay of his cross. Okay. And I just answered that second. We have salvation, salvation because of the atonement works of Jesus Christ to all who believe. But now, if you're not a believer, you're not included. You have to believe in order to be included. You can't say, well, I've done too much wrong. We all have done wrong because scripture tells us we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Remember, God pronounced the whole world guilty. And therefore, he had to have somebody to humanity to come and redeem mankind from the clutches of sin. And the only person that was found worthy or met all of God, the Father's requirements, was his only son, Jesus Christ. So that since Jesus Christ uh, made a one-time sin atonement for our sin, that makes him our redeemer. Jesus Christ is our redeemer because of his one-time sin atonement on Calvary's cross. And in our rescue package is justification, meaning that we now, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, have a right standing with the Father. We are no longer alienated from him, and our sins has been forgiven. All we have been pardoned. And we're in a court of law. And we do something wrong. The judge has the ability or the power to pardon us. That means take that, that sin has been washed away. This is what being justified through the blood of Christ does for us. And then in a, another component, of that uh, rest of our rescue packet is sanctification, which is we are consecrated back to the Father 
or we are set aside. We are a called out people, believers. We are a called out, called out from where? Called out from the world, even though we are still in this world and we are still left here for a reason. We are not here just to go along with the world and conform to the world. No, when we have been sanctified and set aside or consecrated back to the Father, we are a special people. We become peculiar people. We have committed ourselves to doing things God's way and seeing things through his eyes. Even though we're still here, because we are God's workmanship. We are the light and the salt of the world. And, with, and being the light, we are shining the righteousness of Christ in our daily lifestyle. And being <laughs> the salt of the earth, we are seasoning the earth with the word of God and our test, living testimony. We are showing the world of the righteousness of God. Okay. Let, let me just try and move on. The results. Okay. We asked the question. Okay. What are the results of, our, of us having a rescue back? Well, our rescuer is Jesus Christ because we have been redeemed by him through his shed blood. And all who are believers are the righteousness of Christ. And we are now wearing the righteous garment of God's salvation. And the gift for everybody who believed, that was our sub subtitle, a free gift for everyone is salvation. And how everybody get it, this gift, simply believe. So that answers the question, who gave the gift? God the Father gave the gift because he gave his son as our sin atonement to restore a broken relationship to all who believe. So who are we to believe? We are to believe that number one, yes, there is a God who created all things. Jesus Christ, his son, sacrificed his life on the cross at Calvary, making this one time sin atonement, reconciling all believing humanity back to the Father. And that's why when Jesus said, I am the way, way to where back to the Father. I'm the truth, because yeah, he tells the truth because he is God and he is the light. He is alive because he came so that all who believe will have life and have it more abundantly. Because it's in and it's, it's life, our life is in Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. Okay. So in order to receive God the Father's free gift of salvation, we must believe in Jesus Christ with our total being, not just the head knowledge, but it's, it, it starts in the heart. And then it's supposed to say, in the heart we believe, and, uh, and with the mouth we confess it's to salvation. Okay, now my last question, and getting us to see what we have and why we have it, and who gave it is, the question is, why did God do what he did for mankind? Well, let's look at it this way. It was done out of God's unconditional love. And when you look at the order of creation, man was created last. God had created everything else that he was going to create until he got to man. Man, he created man in his image and likeness. 
He put part of himself into humanity. He gave him a will, a mind, an ability to love and to think and to choose right from wrong. So, yes, uh, <clears throat> he did what he did out of uh, his unconditional love. And I want to remind you of something I said earlier, that God is love. And he done what he done. He brought us back into, into balance with him and to that harmonious relationship because we had got sin had caused us to get out of fellowship with, with God. But he loved us so much, he would not allow us to stay alienated from him. He did what he needed to do to restore that broken fellowship. And what was part of his redemptive plan was he had to give his only begotten son, who was the only one, as I know I said this, was found worthy to pay man's sin debt. And why you say he was the only one found worthy was number one. He was human and divine because God needed somebody with human blood. Jesus Christ met that requirement. He had a relationship to the Father because he is from the Father. He had a relationship to the earth because he was there in creation when everything was created. And he had a relationship with humanity because he was human and divine. So then once, since we know what all God did for us, what is our appreciation for God's love? What is our appreciation? How do we express our appreciation? First, is it do we accept him? Or do we reject him? And knowing or believing that or having some idea that if I accept him and his son, who did what I couldn't do for myself, <laughs> he paid my sin debt. And that I'm thankful. That I'm committed to him for life on this earth. Knowing when I leave this earth, I have another home that's not made by hand. I have a heavenly home that's waiting for me. I have to be able to live in eternity for everlasting in the presence of my creator and my savior. That, that's to be our appreciation to God to say, thank you. I'm going to accept your son as my personal savior because I want to be in fellowship with you. You created me in your image and likeness, and I want to have a intimate relationship with you. That's 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 what should be our appreciation. So let me just kind of keep on and take a, a brief look at Paul's argument to his audience that is applicable to now. And it is found in verse seven, uh, six and seven. And let me just flip back over and read verse six and seven. It said, but the righteous which is of faith, speak it on this wise. Say not in thy home, in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from heaven. And verse seven said, okay, who's going to ascend into the deep and bring him up out of the ground? Who, who's going to bring them? Okay. Who's going to do that? Nobody. Nobody can go to heaven and bring Christ down. Neither can we go down and raise him up from the dead. Christ, God raised Christ from the dead. And we must simply believe that all who believe in Jesus Christ died with Christ and rose with him. 
So mm -hmm. nobody can go get him from anywhere. Because he is God himself. And he's everywhere. And in God's redemptive plan of redemption, he fixed it that man would have nothing to brag about and his process of, say, of salvation. He can't work our way to it. He just simply have to believe. And then next Paul, the next one of Paul's argument, he was saying that the word is near to you because it's in your heart. It's in our mouth and our heart. Faith is what Paul is preaching here. He said, I, I want you to believe in your heart. And this is what I've been talking about in the lesson all morning long. You simply have to believe. And this is what Christ, he said, Paul is preaching faith. I'm preaching faith. We, in order to believe in Jesus Christ, we have to have faith. Scripture tells us it is without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to see him because we have to have our faith and put on our spiritual eyeglasses. Now, let me get to, this is part of that Romans wrote when Paul in verse 9 and 10 tells us how we are to be saved. And it simply says this, if thou confess with thy mouth, that's why he said in the previous verses, it is near to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. You got to speak it. You got to believe it. He said, if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy who our heart that God did what to him? Raise him from the dead. He didn't say you might. He said, thou shall be saved. That is God's guarantee. And we, what we know about God, he is trustworthy. He's truthful. And we, have, we can have confidence in it. And there is no failure in God. You know. And then in verse 10, Paul makes the argument that, for with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness. So it, it goes back to what I've been saying to say, or, uh, implying that we believe with our heart, our total being, because our heart is the epicenter of our action. If we believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as our Savior, then we're going to act like it. And, but if we reject it, it's our salvation, it's his gift of the God. If we reject God's gift of salvation, we're going to act like that too. Okay? And, and you know, you heard that phrase, you are what you eat. Yeah. Well, if I eat righteousness, then I'm going to manifest righteousness. Okay? Now. So let me kind of move on here and say, because I've kind of discussed all these chapters, these verses here. And I have to say, Good morning. Good morning. Except in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we are assured of receiving salvation. And with that come unspeakable joy that will give us that fire shut up in our bones that we can tell the world of the good news. That faith in Jesus Christ brings the believer into a good standing with the Father. That's that justification we had been talking about. Okay? Simply because a broken relationship has been restored. The believer is no longer an enemy toward God, but instead is part of God's family and Christ's body. Then the believer becomes a living witness for Christ. Becomes a living witness Tell everybody about 
of what God has done in her life. It is in her life. And Paul precloses his argument with the Roman Jews by saying that salvation is to everyone. Not that's in verse 10 and through 13. And I say again, it talks to being for everyone, it, it incorporates John 3.16 when he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believe in him, whosoever, he didn't say Jews only, didn't say Nesta, uh, Gentiles, he said, whoever you are, except my son, believe on him and you shall be saved. That's what he said. It didn't say about social status, economical status, or nothing. It says, come as you are, whoever you are, and believe. And Paul closes his arguments by saying that the proclaimers of the gospel must believe because they have said it's beautiful thing to be called by God to proclaim the good news of the gospel by preaching salvation to all who will hear and believe in their heart and then confess it with their mouth that yes, Jesus, I accept Jesus as Lord. And if I can, can close here with these few points, few pointers. What do you believe? Do I believe that yes, Christ died for my sins? And yes, I believe that God raised him from the dead. And then I believe I died with him and I rose with him on Sunday morning. Do I believe that accepting him as my personal savior, I am assured of salvation. And that salvation is the free gift of God the Father, given out of love for his prized creation. And that's humanity. That's, that's if I believe that. Now, next thing I ask the question, do I believe that Jesus Christ is the foundation of our faith that leads to salvation? Do I believe these things? Faith in Jesus Christ is what saved all of us who are saved on the confession of my faith that I believe so that the world will know, yes, I'm a child of God. How will the world know that I'm a child of God? Because I not only witnessed Christ through my verbal testimony, but I live it daily, showing the world who I am. And whose I am. Yes, I believe. And I've accepted Jesus Christ as my servant. Personal savior because I God has given me a gift that I didn't have to work for. God did for me what I couldn't do for myself. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. That's that. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message today. And I thank you for all who are listening and who have accepted your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. And Father, I'm asking if all who haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, do so immediately. That is, blessings and being saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.